Hello everyone, uh, my name is Prabhjit Singh Baga and I'm a technical marketing engineer here at Cisco Systems. Uh, I'm going to be doing a video series of the new intent-based networking with the Cisco DNA Center and this video is going to be an install of DNAC 1.3 from start to finish and I'm going to show you the user interface and how easy it is to set up your network, automate it, uh, secure it and assure that everything is up and running. So get ready. All right, let's get started. So uh, this is the physical server uh, of Cisco DNS Center. And uh, what we are focusing here are the four ports that need to be connected uh, for the whole install to take place. Um, the, one of the ports, let's start from the uh, middle, which is the CIMC port. This is the first uh, thing we need so that we can access the uh, server itself and go to the KVM console where we can uh, access uh, the USB flash drive that has the actual DNS Center code. Or we can also download an ISO and uh, put uh, add that as a virtual media to the KVM console. And uh, all that can be seen right here. This is the KVM console. Uh, we can boot, uh, we can add like activate a virtual media and we can uh, do many things like add the ISO or we can even boot from the USB drive. And that's what we're gonna do this time. We're gonna boot from a USB drive. So we need that CIMC connection. Uh, on the right, you see the DNAC uh, GUI interface. This is a one gig interface um, that needs to be connected so that we have access to the user interface of DNS Center. Um, and then on the left hand side, we have two 10 gig interfaces. One is going to your lab network, to all of the devices uh, and to access them. And then the other one is to connect Cisco DNS Center in HA. So for redundancy. All right, so here we are at the CIMC IP address, uh, which is the, the management controller for the Cisco DNS Center. Here, what we can do is we can launch a KVM. And once we launch the KVM, we get taken to this uh, window right here. And what happens is uh, once we are here, um, we can do a reboot. And once we do a reboot, what we want to do is we want to get to a menu where we can boot off of the USB flash drive. So it's important to do a boot here. So we can just do like a power cycle. And once we do a power cycle, we uh, get taken to uh, this boot up menu of the Cisco uh, server. And then what happens is uh, we can then select F6, which is the boot menu, so that we can we, it can take us to a menu where it says, where, what do you want to boot from? And we here we say we want to boot from a USB flash drive, which we have already connected uh, to the Cisco DNS Center. And once we do that, it takes us to uh, the this page right here, which says, hey, now install my DNA appliance, right? So let's just do that. So once we do that, what I have done is to save our time and to actually show a demo, um, I have recorded, pre-recorded this whole thing. All right, so I'm gonna hit play on the recording and let's just watch what happens once we uh, click on install the DNSC appliance. Uh, it goes and tries to uh, start all the initial services of the server, which is uh, uh, brings up all the ports, starts SSH, all the services for NTP, etc. So let's just give it some time uh, for it to install everything and take us to the next page. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to click on the start a Cisco DNS Center a cluster. And this is the first interface that we are going to configure. And this first interface uh, is the 10 gig interface that I showed you, which was on the left hand side. Uh, and let me just pull that up again. And this is going to be an inter cluster network for HA. What we do is we have we need a slash 21 network for this. We can configure that with an IP 172.16.0.5.255.255.248.0. And what we're going to do after that is make that also a cluster link and then move on, proceed uh, to the next interface. The next interface will be the UI interface for DNAC. All right, so we are making this a cluster link and then we're moving forward. Via DHCP, uh, Cisco DNS Center, this network already got an IP address, but what we wanted to do was have a static IP. So I changed the IP uh, to a .130 and uh, gave it a subnet mask, a default gateway, and uh, I'm configuring the DNS server now. And we don't need to make this any cluster link, don't need any static routes for it uh, because they're all default gateway is already configured. Uh, this doesn't need to be configured. Uh, and let me pause this real quick. 
uh, that previous interface did not need to be configured because it's a, it was a cloud uh, link, um, which we are already going to have cloud access to our uh, one gig interface. So we don't need to configure that. This another 10 gig interface is the most important one, which is taking the DNS center and connecting that to your lab network so that uh, the DNS center can now access all the devices in the lab, can uh, um, automate the bring up, can make uh, can get telemetry out of it and make sure everything is up and running. So we uh, we assign it an IP address, give it a subnet mask, give the DNS server IP. And here we would want to add IP addresses of all of our lab uh, devices and to access them from this 10 gig interface. That's why we are adding static routes. So all of my loopbacks for my devices are on 333 uh, network. So I just said that 333 network go via 10.5.132.1 and same with the 10.5.0.0. So after we're done with this, we're going to hit next. We're not going to make this a cluster link. Yep. So again, uh, what we are doing is we are just configuring the IP addresses of all of these networks of the Cisco DNS Center, so that once we do that, uh, we can have access for it from our network. We can go to the user interface. The DNS Center has access to all the lab devices, etc. So here we hit proceed uh, to proceed with the installation. Now at this time, what it's doing, it's validating the IP addresses and its reachability to the DNS server, the uh, and the default gateways, etc., so that uh, it, it sees that if it has access to them or not. Go to the next prompt. So here we are adding our network proxy for HTTPS, so that if it's a lab network, if you need to go outside to the internet, you via proxy, we can add that here. All right. So we are adding our Cisco proxy HTTPS proxy wsacom at port 80. All right, and once we do that, we're gonna hit next. We don't need to, if you, are not, if you have a standalone DNSE, we don't need a cluster link. That's why we just leave that empty. Here, we would give the password for our user accounts. Uh, one is Moglave, another is administrator. Uh, so I'm gonna do the username and password uh, for that. I'm just enter password uh, again and again. All right, once we do that, hit next. And we're going to enter our NTP server over here. Then we're going to hit next. And now it's trying to act. It's trying to validate its connectivity to the NTP server. All right. So uh, once that's done, we're going to add uh, an, a subnet which is not being used anywhere else in our network. And this is for all of our containers uh, of Cisco DNS Center uh, in how the whole software works within itself. Uh, for all the containers to have an IP address, this is all the internal IP addresses for Cisco DNS Center. So we just have an internal slash 21 IP address range, which is not being used by anything else, and hit next. All right, so this is saying that uh, this DNS Center I had already configured, so it's saying that if you proceed, you're going to lose all of your previous configuration, and I don't care about that. I want to upgrade to 1.3, so I'm going to hit proceed. All right, so at this point, what's going to happen is uh, all of your previous configurations are done, right? So we have already told DNSC what IP addresses we want, what HTTP server we want, what DNS server we want, what NTP server we have. All that previous uh, configuration piece is done. It was that easy. And now what it's going to do is it's going to take its time to configure a DNS -E to untar all of the packages to install and start all the applications. And this takes around two and a half to three hours. So what we're going to do is we're going to skip and come back once the installation is complete. All right. So it has been around an hour and 15 minutes and the installation is about to complete. And let's just take a look. And what's going to happen here on is uh, it, it's going to reboot the Cisco DNS Center server and bring up all the interfaces. All right. So looks like the configuration has succeeded. Uh, and if you do not do anything, it's going to do a reboot in 30 seconds. 
All right, so what we can actually do at this point is we could actually go into the login to the CLI of Cisco DNS Center and watch our packages getting installed. All the Cisco DNS Center packages like Assurance, Automation, SD Access, all of these packages uh, get installed. So once this boots up um, and it's at a prompt where it's doing the bring up of all our networks, we'll try to go into the CLI. All right, so uh, we can see all the packages are getting installed right now. And what I've done here is uh, I've gone into the CLI of uh, the Cisco DNS Center uh, using the UI address of uh, 10.195.180.130. And here what you can see is on the left you'll see all the application names. Uh, and what uh, in the middle you'll see what's a deployed version and what's available and what's happening with the deployment. So it says that it's pending deployment. What I've done here is I've done a, started a watch on the command maglev package status. And what it's doing, it's, it's, it's showing us a progress bar of uh, the whole progress it's taking to install all the packages. Now I'm going to slowly try to skip. So what we see here is that our workflow progress has been at, is at 99% now. And it's been uh, three hours, a uh, little over three hours uh, and five minutes uh, that this installation has been going on. Um, and it looks like most of the packages are deployed already. Once they are all deployed, what we can do is we can then go to the user interface of Cisco DNS Center, install the rest of the updates from there. All right, so at this point, we should be able to go to the user interface of uh, the Cisco DNS Center and see what updates uh, are popping up there. And then you might see in the CLI that we have three um, or four packages that are not installed yet, which is the SD Access, Sensor Automation, SSA. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll go to the UI and then uh, install it from there. All right, guys, so let's go to any browser and type in the IP address uh, for 10.195.180.130. All right, this is a beautiful screen. Let's log in with our admin user and the password we configured uh, for admin. All right, so first of all, what we're gonna do is we can go to the software update page and try to see what software updates are needed. All right, so we see that the uh, software updates that were pending in the CLI uh, that we were logged into are seen right here. So what we'll do first do is we'll install all the softwares and then uh, we'll deploy all of them in the UI. All right, we can see the progress bar here as well. All right, so let's give it some time for this to finish. All right, so we see that mostly all of the packages have been deployed, installed. Uh, one last one for the application policy is remaining. All right, so it seems like all the packages are deployed. Now we'll go to the main homepage of the Cisco DNS Center and voila now we have the 1.3 cisco dns center installed completely and we can now get started to do the discovery of our network devices designing our sites and branches assigning policies and also pushing all the policies with provisioning and then also making sure everything is up and running with assurance all right so here what we're going to see is the new changes that we have made in dnsc 1.3 and one of them is uh, seen right here with the get started page so what we are going what we want to do is guide the users in, to, through different workflows and the first step is discovering your devices in your network all right so let's get started uh, with the discovery of the devices and once we discovered the devices they can be added to our inventory of the cisco dns center and once it's there we can automate that and we can configure uh, the devices and we can apply policies and secure them right so let's click on get started so here uh, with the part of discovery and getting started with the Cisco DNS Center, what we are doing is we are defining the basics of a device discovery, like what is the syslog server, what is the SNMP server going to be for all the devices that are going to be discovered, what is the NetFlow server, IP, and port going to be. All right. After the configuration, we'll just hit Save and Next. 
So then this page is the page where we can now start discovering our devices in our network. We can give it a name and then we can also give an IP address range or just use CDP to go find the devices. And then we can also add credentials, CLI credentials, uh, so that we can SSH into the devices and add them to our discovery. For this discovery, uh, what we need to do is we need to have devices uh, like switches, routers, firewalls, uh, wireless LAN controllers, which have just basic layer two, layer three connectivity between each other and uh, no uh, configuration that has been pushed by Cisco DNS Center previously. So we should write arrays, all the configuration certificate files, and uh, just have basic connectivity uh, to all these devices. All right, so once the discovery gets completed, uh, we can view our discoveries. What we can see is we had five devices that got discovered. We uh, gave them the loopback IP address uh, range from 3331 to 33300. It went and found five devices with the CLI credentials that we provided and SNMP credentials that we provided. And we can see that these devices are reachable through CLI and their status is all green. And to what we can also do is we can look at the device topology so this is the topology view of all of our devices in our network. In the topology view, we can even interact with these devices. For example, we can go into, we can click on one of the devices and see what the IP address is, what the software version it's running, what, the, what its MAC address is. And also we can run commands of CLI on the, from right here in the topology view. If you feel like in the topology view, our network role is not properly uh, mentioned, we can even go and edit that to a core distribution access, etc. All right, we can go to the Cisco DNS Center homepage now. And this is the one single pane of glass to our entire network. It tells us what is our overall health summary of our network, how many wired clients, wireless clients we have, how many network devices do we have in our network, we can go to the design page where we can define our sites and buildings and floor, etc. for per devices. We can also define our network settings, which is what are our AAA servers, what are our DNS servers, DHCP server, uh, what is our syslog server. And then we can also define our lab credentials for SSH into the devices. And we can also define our IP address pools. And what I'm gonna do in the next video is go over detail of how to design using Cisco DNS Center and how to also create policies where we create macro segmentations and virtual or virtual networks or VRFs and then we also do micro segmentation where we have group based access lists and policy with Cisco DNS Center and then what we are going to do is once we configure and design and our policy we are going to push all of that to our fabric and what Cisco DNS Center also provides is visibility into our network. Uh, this is like a magic crystal ball into our network which tells us how many clients are in healthy states, how many devices are in healthy states. All of these things can be done with Cisco DNS Center Assurance. All right guys, so that was our video of Cisco DNAC 1.3 install from start to finish. It took us approximately four hours uh, to go through the whole installation, including the configuration uh, in the beginning. And once we were there, we were able to see, uh, discover our devices, uh, view the topology, and now we are ready to design our site uh, and also uh, do security and then provision the fabric, etc. So stay tuned for the next video and keep learning. Thank you.